This is your 28storms.com and Hurricane Tracker app tropical weather update for Saturday, September 24th. Tropical Storm Ophelia is still struggling to survive out here in the central Atlantic, but we now have newly formed Tropical Depression 17, and we have this new outline feature. This is Invest 91L, located just to the east of Florida. It's currently located over the Bahamas, and it's going to be moving north in a general direction toward North Carolina. Ophelia is still a weak to moderate tropical storm and it's passing just to the north of the Caribbean, so the impacts are going to be fairly minimal, with only some glancing showers expected toward the second half of this weekend. In the meantime, interest in Bermuda are still expected to keep a close watch on the system, although it is expected to remain generally weak over the next four to six days, and if anything, the most you will be impacted by is a very weak tropical storm, and the chances of this going directly over the island are still fairly small. This is a look at the latest model spread, and we do see quite a lot more divergence compared to just yesterday. Some of the models are keeping this generally weak, and they try to take it as far west as the Bahamas, although that is fairly unlikely. The more probable track is that it will gradually turn off toward the northeast, and that's why Bermuda is still a question mark in regards of receiving any type of impacts from the system. But there is also the chance that it remains just to the east, and due to the strong southwest wind shear, that would mean that all of the convection would also remain well to the east of the island as well. And this is the latest on Tropical Depression 17. It has maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour. It should go on to develop into a moderate tropical storm, but the latest forecast track has this passing safely to the north into the central Atlantic without impacting any land masses. And the model guidance generally supports this idea. We have a weakness in the ridging over here between 30 and 40 deg degrees west longitude, and it's going to move north straight into that weakness and eventually dissipate. And the third system out there in the Atlantic this afternoon is 91L Invest. It's the closest one to home. It's located due south of Wilmington, North Carolina, and it is forecast to move in that general direction. It has a slight chance of developing into a very weak tropical depression or tropical storm, but I would place those odds at only between 10 and 20 percent. But if anything, this could provide some extra rainfall to the eastern half of North Carolina and then eventually into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Tropical Depression 17 is just east of this satellite frame, but if we first go ahead and look at the western half of the basin, we see that much of the Gulf and Caribbean are generally clear. Here's Ophelia to the northeast of the Lesser Antilles. It's definitely still struggling due to that southwest wind shear. It's really hard to make out exactly where that surface circulation is located, but it still appears to be out ahead of the convection somewhere out here, just to the east of the islands. And Turning to the infrared, you can see where all the primary convection and shower and storm activity is located. It's still well off to the northeast of the center. So interest in the Virgin Islands are expected to only receive some passing showers over the next 48 hours. Certainly nothing significant and nothing too out of the ordinary. So we're looking fairly good out here. And over here in the Bahamas, this is 91L Invest, but it's really disorganized. It's elongated from south to north, as we can also see on the visible satellite. There are no indications that it's developing a well-defined surface circulation, and chances are it's not really going to have much in the way of time to really get its act together. It's going to be moving into the Carolinas over the next couple of days, and that's in response to this trough beginning to carve out much of the southeast United States, and if anything, that's also going to usher in more unfavorable conditions aloft. This is the latest HPC 5-day precipitation forecast, and some of the enhanced rainfall totals along the east coast are in response to that tropical disturbance. There's even a precip forecast maximum of roughly 4 to 5 inches near the outer banks of North Carolina. And before we switch over to the eastern Pacific, this is just a quick look at Tropical Depression 17 located to the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. It definitely appears to be better defined this afternoon. It looks like it's well on its way to becoming the next tropical storm. All that being said, however, this is the latest water vapor, and this clearly displays the reason why we're not overly concerned about this system. We already see the approaching trough over here on the northwest portion of the screen. This trough is going to weaken the ridge further over the next 72 hours, so we should begin to see a northerly turn fairly soon. But the main story in the tropics is still Category 4 Hurricane Hillary. It has weakened ever so slightly from 145 miles per hour. It's now down to 140, but the official forecast still continues to follow this as a major hurricane through 5 a.m. on Monday. Now, toward the 4 to 5 day period, they're still expecting that it's going to eventually turn more toward the north in the general direction of the Baja Peninsula, but there are still quite a lot of uncertainties regarding the medium range forecast. 
Nevertheless, the good news is that even if it does make that turn toward the Baja, it looks increasingly likely that it will pass over much cooler water temperatures, and we will definitely not be dealing with a major hurricane landfall, but we still could have a tropical cyclone make its way over the Baja, potentially more so likely as a tropical storm, but that is something we will still have to closely follow. This is a look at the current model spread, and compared to yesterday, we actually have more westerly tracks, and even some of the models that take this more toward the northeast show a turn back toward the northwest with time, and that is certainly an optimistic possibility. This is a look at the latest mid to upper level steering pattern, and as long as we have a narrow portion of mid to upper level ridging located just to the northwest of the hurricane and to the west of the Baja Peninsula, Hillary is more than likely going to stay on a general west-northwest heading. And we have increasingly positive news from the 12Z run of the ECMWF model. This is starting off with the day four forecast. This is the expected position of Hurricane Hillary. This is the remnants of the trough over here across northwest Mexico. And by day five, that trough is beginning to slide more toward the southeast and bypassing the hurricane. In the meantime, we have a return of ridging across much of the southwest United States. And that's a good pattern to have because that's going to ensure that this hurricane is not going to quickly recurve into the Baja Peninsula. Instead, it's more than likely just going to meander out to the west over much cooler water temperatures. And if the European solution is correct, then more than likely what will end up happening is this storm will eventually fall apart over those cooler water temps. This is the latest zoomed-in visible floater of Hurricane Hillary. Hillary is still obviously a very impressive-looking Category 4 hurricane. The same can be said by looking at the latest enhanced infrared. We still see a well-defined eye located well within the central dense overcast. Now the other bit of good news is that this is a relatively small hurricane, so the impacts here along the Mexican coast are fairly minimal at this current hour. If anything, some of the outflow may be keeping the high temperatures down just a little bit, and I'm sure residents are liking that aspect of the storm. And this is the latest look at the water vapor, and we should begin to see more gradual weakening as we go into the afternoon hours tomorrow. We see a large swath of dry air and a little bit stronger southwesterly wind shear, and this is a somewhat more unfavorable environment. And so Hillary has more than likely peaked with a maximum intensity of 145 miles per hour. Switching back over to the Atlantic to see what's going to occur over the next 5 to 10 days, this is the 12Z run of the ECMWF. Notice by 24 hours the model continues to weaken tropical storm Ophelia. It only has a broad low of 1012 millibars located just to the northeast of the Virgin Islands. This is still a possibility that I am not discounting as over the last several days I haven't been overly enthused about the prospects for intensification from the system. The upper level environment still appears to be unfavorable and if this remains weaker than the official Hurricane Center forecast it's also going to stay a little bit to the south of their official forecast track. And then as we go into 48 and 72 hours, the model keeps the storm relatively weak as it begins to turn more toward the northwest. And by day 4, and especially day 5, notice that the overall forward motion is expected to be somewhat slow as the steering currents are expected to break down. The subtropical ridge over the north central Atlantic is going to weaken in intensity as the trough over the eastern United States begins to build in. And by day 6 and day 7, we finally begin to see a northerly progression with the storm's movement, but it's also being absorbed by the trough as it moves into the western Atlantic. By days 7, 8, 9, and 10, it looks as though we don't have any significant threats in the deep tropics. If anything, the European is beginning to develop a broad area of low pressure near the Yucatan Peninsula. That's really not out of the, out of the ordinary as we go into early October, the western Caribbean, and southeast Gulf of Mexico usually become the two main hotspots for tropical development. And as of right now, the model is not showing anything overly significant, but this could be something to keep an eye on as we move into the early part of next month. So that sums up what is happening in the tropics on this Saturday afternoon. Please check by again by sometime tomorrow afternoon for another video.